My three-row SUV gets three kids to three different sports. Mom, let's go. Luckily, Exxon Mobil Synergy Supreme Plus Premium Gas is three times cleaner for better mileage. Go on. Find a station at exxon.com. Synergy Supreme Plus Gas compared to Synergy Regular Gas and Port Fuel Injected Engines. Benefits based on continuous use and may vary. Everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Did you happen to watch Monday Night Football? I uh, watched uh, bits and pieces. I didn't see the cheap shotting. I did see the guy, dang, the guy who's still in trouble, by the way, is in the uh, Cincinnati Hospital with uh, spinal experts uh, looking at him. Shazir, who's a very, very good linebacker for the Steelers. So I did not see the cheap shotting that took place in the second half, though. Sounds dreadful. Apparently it was quite the... Uh, well, what's amazing to me is you can watch a guy uh, get injured as badly as uh, Ryan Shazir was for Pittsburgh and sit around and all pray for him, and then an uh, hour later you're trying to kill each other, you know, mm-hmm. with cheap shots. So it's, uh, it's uh, you, you just wonder about the brain power that's taking place there. And Antonio Brown was so pleased with his the cheap shot administered by his teammate, Juju, that he uh, said he'll pay the fine. But uh, today they were, uh, Schuster and the uh, linebacker from Cincinnati both got suspended for a game, so. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, it's, it's. The hell uh, with them. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just the, the logic of, uh, the logic of that is just unbelievable that you can watch that and then say, okay, well, that was fun. Let's now see if we can paralyze somebody else. You know, I heard Matt Burke uh, speak. Uh, it was a speech he was at, and uh, that question was raised about uh, violence in football and some of these guys that will do anything. And his response was, some of these players come from absolutely nothing, and so they will stop at nothing to be the best and to make as much money as possible and there's no dialing them back. This is their one way out of uh, being yeah, poor. This is this is not. This had nothing to do with winning a football game or anything. This was just taking a cheap shot at somebody. And you know, I I don't know how that improves your income. <laughs> you well, know but, what but I'm no, saying. I guess they were saying that the violence. I know what part, you mean. You're <laughs> saying there's no logic. Yeah, they're there's just. No, this is all they. Holds bar. This is all they no know. gridiron logic. If Joe was doing a show, gridiron logic, they would not have gridiron. There would logic. no be right. gridiron. Right. Yes. Yeah. But logic. you know, it's also a game intended for maniacs. It's not intended for intelligent people. You can't get them foaming at the mouth. Go out there, kill each other, and oh, by the way, do it with common sense. That's, right. That's right. part of it too. I mean, it's not a game intended for man. You know, it's intended for beast. Which is why I can't believe it can be any fun whatsoever. (laughs) Well. Knowing that on any given play, you could be dead or paralyzed. What fun is it? That's why I winced. That's why I would wince before I hit someone in football. <laughs> Seventh grade, eighth grade. Particularly, and you winced when they were going to hit you even more so. No, I was there. running away from him at that point. <laughs> and running the wrong. I was Jim Marshall and I'm not in that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. You want my uh, basketball theory, which is not very educated? When you, when you play rotten, you lose? When I watch the Timberwolves. <laughs> are we still talking rookie football? <laughs> <laughs> when I watch the Timberwolves. Yeah, it seems to me they don't have enough going on under the offensive basket. They're well, not there. Well, last night, uh, the, where are they? The Grizzlies approached. They got big Mark Gasol in the middle, and then they got him help. And they obviously JB Bickerstaff's strategy, former Gopher, big JB Bickerstaff's strategy was. We're not going to let Carl uh, Anthony Thomas Towns score inside, and then they're going to have to figure out something else. Their biggest problem is they can't shoot. They don't they don't shoot three pointers. They were what four for seventeen again last night. In the modern league, uh they were hoping Jamal Crawford would give him a little bit. He hasn't been that good. 
but they don't have a three point shooter. So they, yeah. they 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 get now now the other team last night was six for twenty one or something. They're nothing to write home about with three pointers either. But they had to work hard to lose that game. Memphis had lost eleven in a row. Mm-hmm. That was brutal. That was their. They have had about five that have, are if you, the the schedule to this point or about almost a third of the way through has been really easy, and they're only one or two games over five hundred. They've 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 uh, kicked away four or five games that there's no excuse for. And last night that'd be the, been the worst of them all. But they have very few of those plays where there's a guy under the basket who catches the high <laughs> floating pass and then dunks it. Yeah, well, they don't have that. Well, not last night for sure. They don't. Well, they don't run. They don't. They don't get up and down the court. They, Why doesn't that big oaf who stalks the sidelines and grunts? Isn't that his problem? The coach to do what? To get him to do the what I want. <laughs> well, last night they prevented that from happening, even if he wanted to do it, because they had two guys the same size as Towns guarding him. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was uh, brutal last night. That mm-hmm. was that was. They're not. You know they're not. Uh, I don't think. I think they're going to run their streak to fourteen. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I just don't. They, what do you mean run the kicked, streak to fourteen? They haven't made the playoffs in thirteen years. It's oh. the uh, second longest streak in NBA history, and I think they could. Uh, I think the way they're playing right now, the number of games that they've let get away that should have been wins, they should be. They should have won that game. What are they? Day. Thirteen and eleven, Reavers. Fourteen. And fourteen 11. and eleven. They should be eighteen and seven with the schedule they've played. They have kicked away at least four games, and they've only won maybe one that they shouldn't have won. It's uh, it was but last night was unwatchable. It was pathetic. Well, especially in the final two minutes, they missed everything. Yeah, and they had no play. They had a, they needed a three pointer, and you know they they just they were they were in nothing to to try to get a three-pointer by Wiggins is their best chance to make one, and he's nothing to write home about. But, they also uh, look like a bunch of guys that don't really care about, I don't know, there's no cohesiveness. They don't They don't really look like they're on the same page whatsoever when they're on the court together. It's, it's really I, weird. I agree, and it's, uh, you know, part of the thing is Wiggins was the man, and now you brought in Butler – and he's kind of the man, so Wiggins is not the man anymore. And if Wiggins isn't the man, he's there's nothing else. He's there. checked out. No, well, or there's nothing else for him to do, except score. He's a scorer. That's right. what he is. If you're not getting him 20 shots a game, then then he's not worth 140 million. That's mm-hmm. for sure. I think he got 148. Mm. Wasn't it 148? Uh. Yeah, Max was one forty eight, one forty eight, something like that for yeah. one hundred and forty eight years. No, he's one hundred and forty eight million for five five years. That's a lot. That is. That's twenty. That's twenty eight and a half. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Especially too much. the way uh, we're Why? doing it. The way the way they're functioning right now, and and Towns to me is a bigger disappointment because he's won't guard anybody. He's and Wiggins after the game. He might not mean it, but at least he just, he'll say that he feels bad. Towns will just, oh boy, they really played good, you know. Mm-hmm. They, you know, he's is a, Towns the Joe Maurer of that club? What do you mean? Oh, in terms of just. Uh, oh no, he's a very talkative guy. He's, he? he's a very outgoing guy. Yeah, yeah. Wiggins is the Joe Maurer as oh. far as quotes are concerned. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Wiggins is uh, Wiggins is hard work. I don't know about this oaf though. This coach who hulks over there. <laughs> Well, stomps around. Well, if they don't make the playoffs this year, he's going to get a uh, $16 million going away present because uh, I don't think he'll be back. It's a hell of a going away present. Yeah, they gave him $32 million for four years because he was like the hot. Here's the trouble with the Timberwolves. I said this last year. Even when they do the right thing, mm-hmm. it's the wrong thing. <laughs> the Wolves. They live by the 50, the 50, 90 year Yeah, yeah right. When they got a 50% chance of being right, they're going to be wrong 90% of the time. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yep. That's exactly right. Of all the coaches on the free agent market last year, Thibodeau was the guy that everybody, yeah, oh, man, you can get Thibodeau. Well, now you got him, and looks like the 50, 50, 90 rule. Right. looks like you, you got the right coach, but he's, you were wrong. He, he's not the right coach. We were uh, we, we're gonna we're talking about the Cleveland Browns uh, earlier today, and there's two hot quarterbacks. Uh, the guy who's going to win the Heisman Trophy, Baker Mayfield from Oklahoma, 
and then Sam Darnold for Southern Cal. Mm -hmm. And the Cleveland Browns will have the first pick, and they will take one of those two, mm -hmm. and he will turn out to be not as good right. as the other one. Right. No matter. We don't know which <laughs> Doesn't one it matter. is. Yep. Whichever one they take, the other one will be better. <laughs> It'll be Peyton Manning versus <laughs> Ryan, uh, Ryan Leaf. Leaf. Yes. Uh, so. They will take the Brian Lawton. <laughs> They will yes. take the Brian Lawton. Instead of Iserman. Yes. You know yes. what? Brian Lawton. Even, yeah. Pat, even more, if they had the first two picks, and if they chose both, both those guys, stiff. they There'd would be, both stink. There'd be some 23rd rounder who was better than them. Who's quarterbacking them now? God only knows. I think the kid from Notre Dame is back playing again. He's a rookie who's... Deshaun maybe, Kaiser. He's a rookie who his coach, who probably wouldn't have started had he stayed at Notre Dame this year, and, but he's starting for the Browns. All right, just a moment. Christine Keeler died. Only yes. you and I in this room will know who that was. John Profumo, what was he? He was like was a but the number two or three guy. guy. Wasn't he a secretary of or whatever they call him over there? Uh, he was he was very high in the government, and uh, she was a uh, young lady who was uh, servicing both him and a Russian agent, and uh, it was quite the scandal, the Profumo scandal. Well... She didn't age well. She was 75 when she died. Well, I know the picture feeling. of her on the Daily Mail, and she just didn't age well. Well, that's, you know, 75. No. Stuff happens. No. Mm -hmm. No. Well. She didn't look uh, anything like she used to look. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, 19's got a tendency to look better than 75. No, I'm telling you. Trust me. <laughs> she didn't age well. Okay, all right. But it was a big okay. scandal back oh, in the day. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was a wonderful scandal. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, did you watch the Ben Bradley documentary by any About chance? About the last half of it, I yeah. caught it. I'll uh, have to rewatch the yeah. front of it. Very Fascinating. Good. Really it was, good. It was good. Oh, well, I then, learned so much. Yeah. I love the fact that he had a filthy mouth. <laughs> yeah. Editors should have. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's my favorite thing about Deborah Hall as yep. an editor. Mm -hmm. She had the filthy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> when she was bad or happy, she had the filthy mouth. I, I came away with thinking less of him than I thought I might. How really? so? Tell me why. Uh, he just he Ego? kept going through the broads, and then he would say, geez, I shouldn't do that, but he just kept doing it anyway. Oh. Well, you know? a lot of yeah. guys have that. Well, that's uh, called right. testosterone. Right. You and he became, you know, he became a celebrity, <laughs> but during the day of... When the Washington Post was exhibiting its greatness, he yeah. was part of the reason. Yeah. You know, he was sitting a lot of information about <laughs> Kennedy we didn't know about, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, they all were back then, though. That that wasn't even news, you know, screwing around. Yeah. You know? No, but Kennedy, how, how's this for a tip? One lady, though, Joe called it an assault. Yeah. He assaulted me mm -hmm. when it happened on the boat. Mm -hmm. But Kennedy gave him a little news tip. Well, how would you like the president to say, hey, I got a little tip for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we got Gary Powers back, the U-2 pilot, and we mm -hmm. released some guy named Sergei Yakolov or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Rudolph Abel. So, uh, so uh, Bradley goes to the phone and gives it to the Washington Post, which was uh, owned by Newsweek or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, it's hard to beat a guy when he's he's getting his stuff right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 right. So I didn't realize that there was uh, that Catherine Graham was taking the post public during a very very critical time in the breaking of the Watergate story. Mm -hmm. That had to be <laughs> nerve wracking mm -hmm. to say the least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put everything in there except your deal getting caught in the rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yep. I love that line. Yep. Yeah. Put everything about. <laughs> Wow. Leave that out. Isn't it amazing, though? These guys had phone numbers for John Mitchell, and they just called these yeah. people up. Yeah, you know yeah. all the all the uh, you know Colson and all those guys. They had phone numbers for them and called them up. Yeah. And, Everybody's so well protected now. Oh, yeah. oh God! And they the only had cell phones. You can't get to the Washington Post had phone numbers for everybody in government, and mm -hmm. they just called them up and said, "Hey, what do you think?" Maury, our guy, Maury Stans, was big. Mm -hmm. And then did you catch the fact that Bradley would get a foul mail from people challenging his service in World War II? Yeah. And yeah. he got, and he became pen pals with one of the guys? Yeah. yeah. And did you see it was St. Paul, Paul, Minnesota? Guy. Yeah, yeah. St. Paul yeah. guy. Yeah. I wish I would have seen the name <laughs> and, 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 He signed it, your favorite 
Whatever. Eight hole, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or horse's butt or something. Right. Your, you your know, favorite body up, part. Yeah, yeah. They became big buddies. Yeah, They're exchanging letters. With oh, each I other. wish I. Uh, I'd love to see it again just to get that address. Well, that's the thing Feely about guy. those guys back of that age, though. They, uh, you know, they can. They got that pretty good trump card. Yeah, I was in World War Two. You know. Plus, they were capable of having a uh, conversation from opposite ends yes. and it not getting. You know, mm-hmm. Twitter like like it is now, where you just blast out a tweet and move on with your. Well, life, the amazing you know? thing yeah. about Watergate that they hit hard is the angle is the Post was out there by themselves. The New York Times wasn't covered it. Nobody covered it. The New York Times wasn't pursuing it. They're out there. They had it by themselves. And I guess Catherine had come down about every day. How come? Nobody else. That, that's a legitimate question. That made her nervous. Well, yeah. Of course, yeah. it should have. Yeah. You know, especially when you got two 30 year olds running around who you don't even know how good they are. Oh, right my goodness. Now. The whole Pentagon Papers thing. I had no idea what any of that was about. That was such an eye opener and fascinating that the Times started this, got shut down by Nixon. And the Post picked it up, and they both fought, and it, and it went to the Supreme Court, and they won. The greatest, the though, was the Janet, the Janet Cook story. Oh, yeah. And, and Marion Barry says, yeah, we know who it is. We'll be, yeah. he'll be taking care of it. Well, well, sure the, you do, the greatest part is that they they had to admit they got cocky. Yep. Yeah. You know, they thought that they didn't, you know, they were the Post now. They did you happen it. to read the spread, the follow-up that the Post did on just what they did wrong mm-hmm. with the Janet Cook? Mm-hmm. You read that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was four full pages inside. Because Bradley said, I don't want to hear a word about what we did wrong unless it's in this paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, that was an amazing retraction. That's mm-hmm. how you do it. <laughs> Investigate yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, like, this kid doesn't exist. The, you know, the, uh, the uh, movie coming out, The Post, is about the Pentagon Papers. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's I'm coming out, really. I think at the end of this. <laughs> At Christmas. Again. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's about the Pentagon. Paper. Are we going to address this tweet on the air, or are we just going to save this for off the air, Rook? W- which one? The tire one. There's <laughs> rebuttal now from your previous oh. tweet. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. No, try them on the air, because I, I don't just... think the mayor is aware of what's going on. I don't know on. if we have enough time, Joe, but I'm willing to bet that 90% of our crashes this morning by cars were caused by people that have really, really Really bad tires. <laughs> and, 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 I don't uh, doubt that. And I'm sitting next to one right now. Did you I take par- a picture? Yeah, I parked next to him in the parking lot. Stop and checking. I pulled up. And those things are. You got bald tires? <laughs> they're balder than Roycey. <laughs> he said, here's an example of hideous tires that will be the cause of a spectacular crash versus kick ass tires that will get you home safely at Rookie GL. And this guy named at Rookie GL responded, it looks like at MSP underscore traffic needs some new tires. I will admit, buying a tire, four tires at $200 a piece, that's painful. But when days like this, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. They're spectacular tires. And Yukon moves. It's mm-hmm. I don't take chances. Yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> your family needs you, and those tires. Not gonna, everybody else is pretty good tires. Those tires are going to get you killed. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment, but now... Be for your tires. Thanks to our great friends. Rookie here for BF Goodrich Tires. (laughs) How's that sound? In Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business, and nobody does that better than Federated. It's Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal, and your money now. Can I get back to Watergate for for one brief second? Yes. Here's something that, uh, it's pretty stupid, like most of my stuff is, but it has fascinated me throughout the years. Have you ever seen, like, the candid photos in the Washington Post newsroom of Woodward and Bernstein sitting around with Ben Bradley talking about? Who's taking those pictures at the time? Does somebody realize that, hey, we're doing something important, I better get a shot of this? That's I mean, a great point. They were relatively unknown. I've been in newsrooms 30 years. No one's ever walked around taking photos. That's a great ah. point. I yeah. never could understand I don't that. know that it gets a rim shot. Oh, that was supposed a, to be funny? Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just curious. It's I mean, going somewhere. No, it wasn't really. How are your tires there, Johnny? I uh, have brand new tires. They're five Chuck, days old. Johnny is, five days old. Johnny is just like Souchere. When the uh, gas tank gets down around a quarter tank, he just goes and buys a new car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I have a fairly new car, but the tires were shot after 30,000 miles. Oh, So I just got new tires. Uh, good job, Johnny. Last Thursday, I think. So I'm good to go. You what must, did you, wait, 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 wait. You must care about what your did family. You, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, what did you do with the old ones? 
Well, I let them uh, take tread, care of them. Any tread at all left? I, I let them take care of them. For, okay. for one dollar per tire fee, they took care of them for me. Here's I, John. I, you know my you. my dream. I gotta say, my dream for the Super Bowl was the blizzard the night before. Yeah. But I want this. You'll take no, ice. I want this. I want <laughs> driving rain, followed by <laughs> driving snow. Followed by suddenly twenty below zero. I believe that you would probably even sell your soul for that. Oh, for that, Lord, let me just we have this all the rich Folks falling on their ass, walking all over downtown, <laughs> look like bowling pins. It would be great. <laughs> we got a lot of orthopedic uh, places in town here, folks. So uh, don't worry about those broken hips. And they might become the official sponsor of Super Bowl Fifty Two. <laughs> yeah, right. Here's John Height. Oh, thanks, Joe. It's partly cloudy and twenty degrees. Wild in action tonight out on the West Coast to face Los Angeles. The number 14 Gopher men's basketball team playing tonight. They're on the road. Really? Didn't I didn't know we were playing tonight. Yeah. I thought it was Wednesday. 8 o'clock. Nope. Play in Nebraska uh, tonight, this evening. Nebraska is rotten. The thing about Nebraska being rotten as they were in football this year, it's a surprise. Basketball, they have a strong tradition of being <laughs> rotten, and they're not changing that. It'd be a dollar. surprise if they were good yes, in basketball. True. I think they've been to one NCAA tournament, maybe two. Former Twins great Rod Carew will get the Lifetime Achievement Award at the first Minnesota Sports Awards Gala, scheduled to be held from 5 to 9 o'clock December 13th at the Target Center in Minneapolis. Huh? Where Where'd this come from? Uh, it's put on by Sports Minneapolis. Never heard of it. These uh, fans from across Minnesota were invited to nominate athletes in designated categories. Awards for high school, college, and professional athletes of the year will also be awarded, and a Courage Award will also go out. Former Vikings standout John Randall and wild play-by-play announcer Anthony LaPanta expected to MC the event. This sounds like competition for the Diamond Awards to me. It does. Doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, but it's more than baseball, though. It's, okay. It could be it's any every, game. It's every well, they, uh, didn't FSN have some goofy thing every year that they stopped? Did they stop having that thing? The uh, Homer right. Awards, I think. Yeah, right. No, the they had, uh, FSN had a, a deal every year. I don't know. I was yeah, the biggest did. ass kisser of this, too. Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> Who, whose picture would be on the certificate or the trophy, though? Uh, that would be a tough one. That would be a tough one. Come on, one. Pat. Who would it be? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> well, we can eliminate one guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Patrick. we got to name it the Sid Hartman Award and then go from there. Don't okay, you? yeah. All and right. then have divisions for each one? Yeah. Ned could never really properly kiss a butt, though, because that schnage of his gets in the way. <laughs> well, you're going for the physical aspect. Of it. And he would somehow turn that around on you and make you feel ashamed. <laughs> News notes from today, Minneapolis Mayor Betsy Hodges and Mayor-elect Jacob Fry have written to Governor Dayton asking him to commit the National Guard to help out during Super Bowl week. They'd respond... Why? That's good. uh, Let's have armed troops in the street. Uh, Apparently this is uh, common. It's happened pretty much at every Super Bowl for the past 15 years. Uh, They'd respond to security needs during the week and supplement the efforts of local law enforcement. Also do routine stuff like pedestrian safety, traffic control, and other work. Honor system! I say the hell with it, honor system. Mm-hmm. Forget all the fences and the gates and the it's things. It's like your flying system. idea. Take the get, yeah. take a vote. Yeah, it's it's the odds. Two, you know what? You always have you know the two tents, bitch and moan. <laughs> yeah. You could have two entrances. Take a chance or long line. You know, just yeah, take right. a chance. You walk right into the venue, and you're right. you're in a special section. Yes, right. <laughs> I agree. A 56-year-old Aitken man is being held in Morrison County Jail awaiting charges after... Not Billy Stein. After oh, th- oh, okay. Authorities Good. say he led them on a 37-mile pursuit yesterday afternoon. A release from the Morrison County Sheriff's Department said a Pierce police officer located a vehicle occupied by a subject with an active arrest warrant behind a grocery store about 4.15 yesterday afternoon. The officer tried to stop the vehicle and a chase ensued, ending in Mille Lacs County. Tracy Wagner Sr. was arrested as being held pending formal charges... In addition to the Morrison County Sheriff's Department and Pierce Police, <laughs> Mille Lacs County Sheriff's Office, and the Mille Lacs Tribal uh, Police Department and State Patrol. They'll be talking about that one in Pierce for years to come, baby. One of those fellas we had in uh, spectating in here in the last year or so was from Aiken, I believe. Mm-hmm. Nice fellow. Was in here with his kid, I think. 
Federal judge? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah um, Steve. Yeah, he was a cool Steve guy. Steve and Julie. Didn't he win the uh, thing? Oh, they've, yeah. Sports I, fantasy I auction. I think he two, paid a hell of years. a lot of money to hang out with That's us. That's coming up next Tuesday. Yep. Yep. Uh, each year, I think he went away even more disappointed. Than he, I think he <laughs> came back the next year thinking, it really sucked that first year. Maybe it's going to get better. <laughs> yeah. But really, I think we'd let him down the second year, too. Yeah. I think that you guys, if we do it again, are we doing it no, again? No, we're not. We're, sure we've got we. some special surprises this year. No, because if we were going to do it again, I think you guys should not pull your punches and just have the same conversation that you always oh, have. Oh, boy. And just um, tell him there. zero recording devices. We would have to have him sign some sort of <laughs> yeah, that's document. Right. That's uh, right. because, uh, oh, sure. I think we might become the first show in radio history to get an FCC violation for off-the-air <laughs> conversation. Yeah, yeah. A federal judge has granted Everett Washington's Bikini Baristas a preliminary injunction temporarily preventing the city of Everett from enforcing its ban on the Bikini Barista stands. Back in August, Everett City Council unanimously passed two ordinances that required baristas to cover minimum body areas. You need another coffee, sweetheart. <laughs> hey, honey. Effectively banning the scantily clad. You, you think it's old? Oh, oh yeah. Old Aunt Bess from down at the Legion? <laughs> Working Hold my for cigarette. Tips. I got to get my uh, tip jar. As a result of the ordinance, seven bikini baristas and the owner of a chain of coffee stands called Hillbilly Hotties sued the city in <laughs> oh, September. That's you got to come up with something, man. You got to move coffee. Yeah, right. You, you got to move, move product. You got to move the product. <laughs> the lawsuit. This is just simple branding. Is that's, all it. that's all it is. <laughs> the lawsuit, they argued the ban passed by the city denied bikini stand employees the ability to, uh, to communicate through their attire and is vague, confusing, and unlawfully targets women. The city had argued that bikini barista coffee stands have a history of prostitution sexual assault, along with the exploitation of the baristas. Well, U.S. District Judge Marsha Peckman issued an order that found the baristas were likely to succeed on the merits of their case as the bans were likely to be considered vague. Judge also found the ban likely violates the First is this, Amendment. Is this Everett, Washington? Sir? That's correct, okay. yes. Boys, mm-hmm. I see this as competition for the Krabby Coffee oh, Shops. So we're going to need you to step up your game. Right. Yeah. You guys are going to have to be wearing bikinis. Oh, <laughs> what the uh, creamer? Uh, what do you got? Sugar? Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, we don't want that. I got oh, some, yeah. Hang on, I got some sugar right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, my top yeah, That's what right you need to get a good bid for the uh, yes. show, uh, next week fantasy. Art. Hold on, my top <laughs> fell off. <laughs> uh, cheese, as we know, is high in fat and sometimes salty, uh, but it can be healthy, apparently. It turns out, according to a new I like study, cheese. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> According to the new study, it turns out rather than causing heart attacks, eating 40 grams of cheese a day, which is just a small piece about the size of a uh, matchbook. Well, that's not enough. Could actually help reduce your chances. A lot more than that. Of <laughs> developing certain coronary heart diseases by up to 14%. Researchers see, from... This ain't that crap Kenny eats, though. This is good cheese. This is cheese, yeah. 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 Good cheese. I Reser- like real che- Velveeta. I like real cheese, too. Not the though. American craft wrapped individual pieces mm. of nuclear waste or whatever the hell you I've eat. recently discovered white cheddar, which is also that's delicious. Uh, that's very good. Mm. Yeah. Researchers from Suzhou University in China have been evaluating 15 different studies from Europe and the U.S., which track the diet and health outcomes of more than 200,000 people. They claim to have discovered that those who regularly eat cheese cut their chances of having a stroke by 10%. Why? Well, apparently it does contain high levels of saturated fat, but the calcium in cheese stops much of that fat from being absorbed by the body while simultaneously raising levels of good cholesterol. It's also thought to contain an acid that can help prevent the clogging of arteries. The report says cheese contains saturated fatty acids, but also has potentially beneficial nutrients. As, you, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I thought you were done. Uh, do you recall when you were ignorant to the um, the the price of a, a fine cheese and you went into Lund's or Byerly's and <laughs> bought a big hunk yeah. and you brought it up to the register and they said, that's forty seventy eight. dollars like, for a slice of cheese? <laughs> a big hunk or something like that. A big, it was a big piece. probably Stilton or something. Yeah. That, uh, he got a quick yeah, lesson. He got a quick they lesson. They got like four goats in the world that make this cheese. <laughs> yes. they, they hang it for 20 years. Give me a so wheel of it. Nice and moldy. Who no. has to pay for it out? Right, just a moment, please. <laughs> uh, 
All right, I have a follow-up that will answer some questions you guys had yesterday. Oh, good. Uh, this is about Alex Bowen. He's the guy, remember, went into the Waffle House, and the yes. employee was asleep. Yes. So oh, yeah. he made his, own, made his meal. own meal. Cooked yes. himself dinner. Right, there's yep. been an update. Uh, there's an update, and uh, he works as a flooring installer. And somebody asked, I believe it was you, uh, Patrick, if uh, perhaps he had been drinking. He says, yes, he was a little tipsy. He mm-hmm. said, I give all the credit to my old friend, Vodka. <laughs> Nor- normally, I wouldn't walk into the restaurant and cook like that. Uh-huh. He did come back later in the day because uh, because the fellow was asleep. He couldn't pay for a sandwich. Yeah. So we went back yesterday, uh, and uh, he-, he paid for the sandwich. And uh-huh. the Waffle House spokesperson also said, somebody said, what about the employee? The employee was suspended for a week. I think oh, you, oh, you asked yeah. about that. Suspended. Right? Sure. So, so you're not supposed to sleep on the job. That's correct. So yeah. It's recommended that you don't. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, what about... Uh, no, nah, I better not. No, I'll, don't. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, yeah. The we, Waffle House also offered him a job, he said. but We uh, don't have Waffle House at all, do we? If I walk we by not. somebody sleeping on the job, what, what should I do? Should tweet, I take, a, should I take a picture and tweet it? Or <laughs> ask, I, him, <laughs> ask him what time the show starts. Should I talk to the boss? Ask him what time or the show who should I talk to about uh, people sleeping on the job uh, that are supposed to be protecting me? I can't help you with that, Kenny. I'm sorry. They Find out if Lori or Julie browns. are in today. They make fine <laughs> hash browns at uh, Waffle House. We have IHOP, really? but we do not have, Waffle, have House. Waffle House. Wake okay. them up and tell them it's Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just want my newspapers. Just wake up and give me my newspapers. Uh-huh. Uh, this this went badly. A skydiving Santa looking to make a grand entrance while taking an elf on the shelf to a nine-year-old girl Uh-oh. crashed into a tree and light pole before hitting a Florida beach and breaking his leg. <laughs> but thirsty Santa. Santa. Yeah. Thirsty Santa. <laughs> Look out. Here he comes. This poor listen, kid's going to be troubled. Listen, listen, listen to Kenny. I knew he'd love this story. <laughs> That's listen fantastic. <laughs> News outlets say George Crocus was dressed as Santa Claus during a Saturday skydive to deliver toys to the Tampa Bay Beach Bums operation, Santa Charity Volleyball They shouldn't tournament. even have Christmas down there. It's no, too no. nice. Cancel it. Cancel it. <laughs> they shouldn't even try any of this stuff. Uh, yeah, it. It's a global no, shared no, no, experience. No, no trees, no nothing. <laughs> I've been to Hawaii. For uh, Christmas a couple of yeah, times? Yeah. It's a complete joke. No, you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't even yeah, be able to have right, it. Right. Uh, George will be okay. <laughs> wow. He, he did break his leg, though. Um, okay. What's this? It, it was Richard, right? Wasn't it your old man? My old man, Thirsty Santa, was delivering a snowmobile and realized when he got about a 200 feet from the picture window, he had no idea how to stop it, so he just <laughs> jumped off. And, and it died. <laughs> It went, you know, it had the automatic shot yeah. off, and it ended up about from me to you away from going through the picture window. Oh, my way. God. Because it was like it going up, a, up the bank. You know? and, and it was one of these old bubble nose, like, skidoos or something oh, in the 60s, early, right? Yeah we're, yeah, we're talking about. What color was it? Do you remember? Black, red, yellow? I don't know. We were all running for our lives. (laughs) (laughs) This was after he had a couple of Martins in him, huh? Oh, yeah. (laughs) But Richard wasn't lower on the knack skill than you, right? So he didn't know how to... Well, they were. He'd new. never they seen were... a snowmobile in his life. No. They, but they were gonna. Santa was gonna deliver it to the family and the and the urchins. And he started. They <laughs> took him out to the middle of the lake, and he's driving across the lake. And they got the spotlight out on oh. the lake. And here he comes. And he Santa bails. <laughs> oh my God! Santa's down. Oh. <laughs> He had the moth-eaten Santa <laughs> suit. Yeah, the year, brown. Man, yeah. it under the steps, rolled up in a ball. I'm picturing yeah. the Santa suit in trading places. Yes, yeah, yeah. Dirty dark and beard. <laughs> yeah, right. Got cigar ashes in it. Yeah. <laughs> Some fish that Santa had. <laughs> Police People are shrieking. <laughs> <laughs> Police in India say they've arrested a man whose smelly socks caused a dispute between him and fellow bus passengers. They told, told the BBC they lodged a complaint against 27-year-old Prakash Kumar. Oh, him. He was causing a public nuisance, according to charges. <laughs> Where is this? In India. How could you differentiate? Doesn't I was thinking it, the same thing. How, they they really weird? had to be bad. They did not smell normal. No. The <laughs> incident, they're, they're eating Indian food in India, right? <laughs> the incident occurred en route to the capital, Delhi, after Mr. Kumar took off his shoes and socks. Gross. The stench from the socks was so bad that oh, passengers gosh. asked him to put them in his bag or else throw them out the window. Oh. Mm-hmm. He allegedly refused, sparking a heated argument. <laughs> 
Passengers <laughs> then forced the bus driver to pull over at a police station in the northern Indian state of Himachal oh. Pradesh. Mm-hmm. The Hind- uh, Hindustan Times quoted Mr. Kumar saying his socks had not been stinking and that the passengers quarreled with him for no reason. Uh, he uh, was arrested for causing a public Did he say he who smelt it dealt it? <laughs> <laughs> we never dreamed that this will come together like this. Yes, sir. No. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Police say a Nevada woman was arrested on suspicion of drunken driving after she drove down a highway the wrong way, danced atop her SUV, then tried to flee from officers on a little kid's scooter. Yeah, that girl. <laughs> Police in the city of Sparks, Nevada, answered a call Saturday for a wrong way driver, found 27-year-old Sabra Bewley's Jeep Cherokee about 20 yards up a hill off the highway. Officers said Bewley was acting erratically and dancing on top of the Cherokee before trying to get away on a kid's scooter that had been left sitting nearby. <laughs> wow. Police detained her, took her to the hospital before she was booked into the Washoe County Jail, arrested on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance, destruction of property, and resisting arrest. A woman who found a $1 million winning Virginia lottery ticket in her husband's backpack said he told her he thought the ticket was a prank. Rose Ibera of Avalon, Texas, told Virginia lottery officials she and her husband were in Virginia because he was working on a construction project. Vera said she was cleaning out her husband's backpack and found a hot... Oh, that sounds very suspicious. Yeah. What is she doing she going through that backpack? Was like, Kenny, yeah. get out of my backpack. I'm with Kenny. Yeah. That's very... What the hell are you doing in my backpack? Yeah. That's... Uh... <laughs> Cleaning out the hubby's backpack when she found a hot millions multiplier scratch off ticket that looked to be a one million dollar winner. That's your theory, Pat. Don't don't be looking at this. No, no, don't. Let it expire. Let's take a vote. <laughs> she brought the ticket to her husband, who said it had been given to him by a friend at work. He had put it in the backpack after scratching it off because he thought it was a joke by his buddy. Wow. Huh? I bear ended up choosing a lump sum option of five hundred sixty one thousand seven hundred ninety eight dollars. Before taxes. That buddy better get a cut. No, they're not going to tell him. You know, John, with all these drugs and drinking stories that you have now with the internets. Sure. It's too bad the internets didn't exist in the <laughs> 70s. Yeah. Like LSD or think of the Oh, you get some good videos there. Yeah. About, hey, man, is that a dragon? It's a <laughs> nine-hour rainbow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> goofy stories oh, we could have had. Man. It was a missed opportunity. <laughs> now, hey, man, is I, that I a dragon? I don't no, think we're hurting. I think we're no, all right. No, no it's my mother-in-law, so it's kind of a dragon. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Isn't that a pun? Uh, no. No, that's no, not, that's a, not pun. a pun. Not a pun, Chris. <laughs> oh, look, look at See, the there's, there's the problem, Joey. doesn't know what a pun is. pun is. That's why he <laughs> yeah. keeps telling so he keeps the doing it. Read the Pioneer Press after every Viking game. There's a pun in the headline. I'm well, saying. you know what? You could look at your paper and find yes. the same thing. Yeah, but yours are a little better. Yeah. Ours are better. Listen we have better down. puns. Listen to you two should wrestle. The papers, yeah. well, why don't you wrestle? But Reavers is forbidden from using puns. But John just stumbled onto something. It's tough. He doesn't know what a pun is. <laughs> so is it a dragon or not? No, it has nothing to do with the, to do with the dragon. You got the Tuesday ride. We have the Tuesday ride. Uh, Bill Livingston, my pal from the Cleveland Plain Dealer, uh, talk about uh, Ohio State feeling wrong and the Cleveland Cavaliers being hot. And the Cleveland Browns, Joe have won four of their last 49 games. Holy mackerel. Four out of 49. We'll talk a little about that. Are people showing up at the ballpark? Yeah, they still go. I don't think they stay for the whole thing anymore, but they're uh, still paranoid about if they're going to lose the Browns if they don't go. And then Rich Gannon, our uh, Tuesday conversation with Rich Gannon on the NFL, which is always uh, very good. Talk a little about the Ruskies not going to uh, South Korea, too. I don't want to cover those games. (laughs) No. I think Putin could be a little upset. I guess they're not going to have a Russian hockey team there, then, no. right? If nothing else. 1500 ESPN is KSTP, St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's 20 degrees the ride with Roycey next. As prices keep creeping up, your entertainment budget doesn't have to take a hit. Live One Plus has all the music you love, ad-free for only $3.99 per month. 
Dive into Live One's massive library of songs, listen to curated playlists, or create your own. Check out exclusive artist-hosted stations and do it all for the best price in streaming. Lock in a Live One Plus membership for just $3.99 per month now, and you'll not only beat inflation, you'll get all your favorite music ad-free. Check out liveone.com slash best music for details.